Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. And today we're talking, continuing our best of designers series, and we're taking a look at Martin Wallace. Now, Martin Wallace is a game designer who was kind of there as we transitioned from, uh, I don't know, kind of two eras of gaming, and he was kind of writing that. For a while, he was one of the most famous designers around, still is very well known. And he specialized in making very unique, strong, historical-themed games. Now, his games could be abstract and stuff, and there's a few games even on my list today that kind of like, well, that's not a strong historical theme. But he definitely puts theme in his games, and he puts a lot of thought into his games. And there's a lot of games that aren't on my list that people will probably yell about and say this one, notably Brass, uh, which is his most popular game by far. And I certainly appreciate Brass, but just didn't make my top 10. Sorry. But again, I can see all this effort he puts into these games and just what's going on in those. And so it's kind of neat to see he had his own company for a while, Tr Warfrog, uh, which eventually changed to Tree Frog. And now he's basically just a design studio and designs games for other publishers. So let's go through my top 10 games that Mr. Wallace has done. Number 10 is The Princes of the Renaissance, which I believe is being reprinted soon. And in this game, which took back in the olden times, there's all these different ways to get points and things and, and tiles. But cities would be attacking other cities, and then you would bid, essentially, to be on one of these two cities as they went after each other. Which is a really kind of a unique thing, and there was a, some pretty deep strategies to this one, and I can't wait to see it reprinted. Number nine is A Study in Emerald. Now, what's odd about this one is I have not even played the second edition, which I hear is better. Well, there's a big debate. I'm sure you'll see people in the comments arguing about it. But A Study in Emerald, which takes this um, Neil Gaiman type uh, as universe, and there's, you know, above ground governments, and then you are controlling these governments. But what's interesting is this game has two distinct teams. Only one person on one of the teams is going to win. And so the teams are not even quite sure who's on your team. Well, at first, anyway. And this a lot of different... It's a deck, deck building-ish... Oh, I don't know. It's just chock full of theme, though. And I was quite enamored with it. Number eight is A Few Acres of Snow. Now, there has been a couple sequels to A Few Acres of Snow in the same genre, which I have not yet played. But A Few Acres of Snow took deck building and added it to a war game. Now, I have not... I don't know anything about... There's a lot of people claiming this game's broken. I don't know. It's just... For me, it's fun. Uh, as I play, build a deck of cards, and you're using these then to fight a war game, basically the 1812 uh, war, French and Indian war, I'm not sure which one. Um, and you are doing this as you play these cards and moving pieces around, so it's a kind of a marriage of war game with deck building, and I thought it worked really well. Number seven is Conquest of the Empire, which is actually based on another game he did, Struggles of the Empire. I think Conquest I like a little bit better. Uh, this kind of put took his Struggles game where you were building an empire, Glenn Drover also helped with this game, brought him plastic pieces and stuff. And so there's just different things going on in this game. It was kind of a big Eagle production. And um, I don't know how often I'd play it these days, but it, it was long and glorious and interesting Conquest of the Empire. Number seven is Discworld Ankh Morpork. Um, in this game, based on Terry Pratchett's books, uh, you are uh, you have your own hidden goal, your own agenda that you're trying to do, and there's influence in different areas, and it has that the humor, a little bit of that humor, and again, this is kind of odd because this is not his historical thing that he normally does, but the game was nice and fun and simple and solid, and I really enjoyed it. Number five is Via Nebula. This is like a game that just came out last year, actually, um, and in this game in which you are transporting goods and getting rid of clouds, it has almost like a fantasy theme, but if you kind of take away the theme, it's really kind of a train game. Reminds me a bit of Transamerica as you're slowly building these paths to transport the goods on and work together to, to accomplish different goals. Beautiful production. Very straightforward and nice little game via Nebula. Number four is another one that just recently came out. That's Hit Z Road. And this one is a zombie game. I'm not a huge zombie fan, but this one, first of all, the whole production just looks like a kid made a game in a zombie time and is making this game to play on the road with his parents. Bottle Cap says as a uh, currency, just really cool. But in this game, you are basically bidding on who's going to go down each of these paths. And as you go down these paths, you roll dice to see what happens as you fight the zombies. Some paths are easier though, but the things that you're bidding are the things that you will use to help fight off the zombies. And basically you're just trying to make it to the end. Really fun little game. Number three is Runebound. 
Now this one kind of is so, so surprising to me because I would never suspect that, that he did this. Runebound's on its third edition, and I'm not actually sure how much he's had to do with the third one, but this was a fantasy one where you went into the Terranoth universe from Fantasy Flight games, you know, Descent and things like that, and you are going on adventures. You are going to stop different things. They, they made all these different packs and you fought the dragon lords at some point you fought your traps and there's all sorts of things that you would go through and do but you go and get people and weapons and things like that it was like the ultimate adventure fantasy game for a while runebound number two is liberté let's get back to history here liberté is the french revolution and i enjoyed this game because you can win three different ways you can win by having the most points at the end um, or there can be a revolution or a counter-revolution, and if you are controlling one of those parties at any point, when that happens and get enough, you can win the game that way. So there's always that threat. You might be losing. You might not have helped the generals go off to war. You may not be doing very well in the different elections that are constantly occurring. But if you can control one party, you can instigate a revolution. And there's just a lot of strong theme. And I, I mean, it's chaotic, right? But so was the French Revolution. And I think it comes together very well. And my number one is kind of a tie between two games, and that's Steam and Railways of the World, uh, or as originally it was called Railway Tycoon. Now, both of these came from Age of Steam, which is probably a second most famous game after Brass, and that's a, that, 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 that's a good game, but I like both of these better uh, because they're a little bit more forgiving. They're both trains, pickup, and delivery style games as you build track. It's kind of like a taking the stock market out of the 18xx games and kind of making them more uh, relatable to people, but at the same time making them give them a lot of choices. Railways of the World is big, Expansive board, plastic pieces, building track all over the place. Steam is a more condensed map, not nearly as beautiful, but very fairly straightforward. Uh, they both use pretty much the same system. Steam's a little bit more, you know, gamery. Railways of the World is more of a experience, but I like them both. And when someone says, what's the ultimate train game? I don't know if this would be my answer, but it would certainly be one that I would think about very much. Anyway, those are my 10 favorite games from Martin Wallace. Now, I am 100% positive that yours are different because there are many games as i was going through here and ships and automobiles and um tinner's trail and he's done so many games and many of these games i like they just didn't make my top 10. tell me what your favorites are in the comments below until next time i'm tom vassal and you've been watching the best of martin wallace on my designer's best series on the dice tower